In a few previous tutorials, we learned how to draw a curly lock of hair. In this one, I'm gonna show you how to draw it in more complex forms. These are examples of curly hair that we're going to learn today. We'll start with number one, which is the simplest form, and gradually increase the challenge in each stage to get to the most difficult one, number nine. So if you remember, I explained that if you break down the shape of a curly lock of hair, we can simplify it into several leaf shapes, which have shadows on both ends and highlights in the middle. So each one of these parts looks like a leaf, which twists and goes back and forth. And if we connect them together, they create a spiral shape. Curly hair actually looks like a twisted ribbon or a paper strip. The areas I mark with a blue pencil are lighter shadows or half tones. Orange areas are darkest shadows, which actually are the shadows that have been casted from this upper part because the light is kind of blocked and it forms a cast shadow. And the green parts are simply highlights. So take a ribbon or a paper strip and take a close look to the shadows. This can be a live model to better understand the twisting curly hair. Now I want to draw curls in different forms and shapes. And I'm going to start with simple forms and then I go for more complicated forms. We're not going to go through shading process in this tutorial. The main purpose is actually sketching and drawing the initial outlines. I start with number one, which is the simplest form. As I said, start with the leaf shape. It's easy to draw. Draw two curves in these directions and connect them at the ends. And for the back of the hair, I finish it with some straight lines that are slightly curved. So easy. And then it turns to something like this finally, if we shade it. This is the cast shadow, cause this upper part blocks the light somehow. Let's jump onto number two, which is as simple as number one. We just gotta draw the leaf shape in a vertical state. And the back of the hair has a more curved form. So make sure to draw it in a more arced way. Number three. Again, I started with a leaf shape and extend the lower part like this with two slightly curved lines and taper it at the end. Number four. Let's start it with a double leaf shape. Draw one here and another one at the bottom. Again, extend it with two lines and curve it at this part because it leans outwards. And again, close it and taper it at the end. Draw another plan at the back and taper its end again and complete it with a nice curve like this. I can give this curve a volume and connect it here. We can draw number five and seven with another method actually. First, let's mark the path with a dashed line and then give volume and thickness to it and then implement the final shape and specify the places need shadows. In this one, these areas have shadows and this part is brighter. We have our highlights in here and again some shadows. Here's another example where like the previous one, we mark the twisting path of the hair with dashed lines and then give it a volume and close the shape and then specify the shadow zones. These are for highlights and then shadows. Highlights and again shadows. So this was another method to draw the curls. You can use any method you're most comfortable with. Let's proceed and go for number six. Draw two leaf shapes parallel to each other and simply connect them with two lines. Number seven. Draw the initial sketch easily by drawing a wavy line and another one parallel to it and close the end to complete the shape. Number 8 is pretty much like number 7. Just draw the wavy line with less waves and it's equal on the other side and close and taper it at the bottom. And lastly number 9 which I started like number 4. Draw a double leaf shape first and extend it with two lines to draw back of the hair and draw another leaf shape in the opposite direction. And again two slightly curved lines for the back of the hair and finally tapered at the end. Let me make the lines bolder. Let's try another one. Like the main method, we start by drawing a leaf shape. Draw the back part of the hair and then the front part. 
we can add another plane here and another leaf shape on top of the previous one. To make it look more complex, we can add a gap in the middle. I want to add another layer. Now let's make an exception. If we want to shade it, we can make this part really dark to give it a depth. Then let's add a cast shadow here with hatching and drag the lines to the middle. As I said, I make the corners darker and keep the middle lighter for highlights. Shade each plan separately. I'm shading with a 6B pencil to feel more ground faster. Even though the back of the hair is darker than the front hair, still the middle is lighter because a little light reaches it. Shade this area as well. Darken the cast shadow and as I said before, there might be some darker strands of hair in the highlight zone. This could help to make your highlighted areas look less flat. I'm just shading very quickly to just show the placement of light and dark zones. And the purpose of this tutorial is not shading, because we went through all of these processes before in the previous tutorial about hair. Okay, we're done here. For the next form, let's just start by drawing a cone from here and here. Extend the cone till here. Draw a line from here and extend it like this. And then connect the rest of the cone to this part. This part is pretty much like the leaf shape. Then let's extend this line and this one too. Then draw a curved line here and drag it inwards. Draw the back plan and return and connect this line to this one. And continue this strand like this and taper it at the end. Now we can elaborate it even more. Let's add a gap here on the hair by drawing a half triangle. Now you can make these sections more elaborated. You can erase some outlines and add more complex pieces to the hair. And also in here, I can erase it and add more layers. And just as easy as this, we can make a lock of hair appear more complicated. Let me clean this area and make the lines bolder. And if we shade it, this would be the result. Here are other forms you can practice. So let's draw two curves right here. And then I can draw another lock of hair at the bottom and then add another one here. And continue this process and taper it at the end as we usually do. Keep adding more plans to elaborate it. You can add some lines in the middle of each plan. Use your imagination to shape it the way you want. This only can be achieved by enough practice. And once you get the hang of it, you can draw freely. Let's define the back plans by adding shadows to them. This area could also be in the shadows. And this one too. Next form. Some artists just draw some rectangles to start with. In this method, you can gradually make the boxes smaller till you reach the end. And finally, you can connect each of them with two lines like this. These are going to be the back plans. It was good to review it, but that's not really my method. What I really like to do is to draw some lift shapes, as I mentioned, and connect them slightly with two curves. Don't forget to gradually draw smaller shapes as you get closer to the end. And like usual, taper it at the end. Of course, we had all of these on the previous hair tutorial. You can find the link in the cards. Now let's break down the process one more time. I start with a slanted line. Wherever you want to start the curls, lead your strokes outward. Create a taper point at the bottom. When you're doing this, it will help to look at a few curls that you've drawn already. I'm referring to the one I drew right here, specifically this area. I'm going to continue right on down to the very next section by referring to the corresponding one right here in my reference drawing. I'm going to draw another one. I'm going to draw another lock of hair right here behind this one. Again, I'm going from the very top go almost straight down and then curve the stroke out to begin the curl. Draw a vertical line connecting each of these points 
and then raise the spare lines to make the curl complete. Create another line to show how thick the lock of hair is. You can vary the width and thickness and shape of each lock. When you need to cross through a section of hair, do the pencil motion for it, but don't actually draw a line through it so that when you come out of the other side and you actually draw the stroke, it looks like a continuation of what was drawn on the other side. Avoid drawing all of them in the same boring shape and give it a more irregular messy form. Drawing the rest is really easy if you refer to the curls that you've drawn already, just like what I'm doing now. Once you get the hang of it, you won't need those references anymore. Another alternative method is to draw a random wavy shape like this and then draw the exact same a distance away, but still overlapping the first wave. Connect them at the bottom. Once you've drawn a bunch of hair, the ones in the very back should be a lot easier to draw because you can draw random hair anywhere you want. And lastly, for the end of this tutorial, I'd like to draw two more forms to help you think of more possibilities when you're practicing. You're gonna start off by drawing simple shapes. Any shape you want, it doesn't really matter. You can start it with a leaf shape, or a wavy line, or a cone, or maybe just a curve. And then you can add more locks and strands and keep elaborating it to make it look more complex. Think of the way back hair are separated from the front ones and the way a curly hair twists and turns back and forth to have a dimensional shape. They're like something wrapped around the cylinder, literally like a curling iron, giving hair this layered dimension. You can distinguish top from the bottom of the hair like this. And here's another one. With the method I showed you, you can actually draw curls easily even if it really seems complicated and confusing. Just simplify and break it down into several main shapes. And once you get the overall shape, add more plans and layers. Make some areas darker and leave some of them lighter to define the depth of the drawing. This was for today's tutorial. I hope you like it and find it useful. And let me know what you think. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!